My name's Olive. I'd love to chat. Parsley, sage, rosemary, thyme. Donkey! So the climax of episode 8 is an absolute clusterfuck. It is a microcosm of close to everything that's wrong with the show. Laughable dramatic dialogue, embarrassingly humorless comedic dialogue, logic thrown out the window, tone-deaf directing, continuity errors. I've already circled back a few times, so let's just get this over with and finish up shitting on it. Now this show has its fair share of animation errors. It's silly, it's distracting. What the fuck is this? But ultimately, they don't affect the plot. Except here. Here we have Sage sneakily going for her Terrasphere. Olive uses Expelliarmus and swats the trinket away. Okay, so far so good. Sage is defenseless. Except in the next shot, the Terrasphere is back. Right there, dangling on Sage's neck. The drama, the tension, the ticking clock of this scene hinges on the location of the Terrasphere. Sage has to get her magic back in time, otherwise the girls are screwed. This is the big dramatic climax, arguably the grandest moment in the entire show, considering how it's presented. It ends on a cliffhanger after all. This is supposed to be important, and yet... The director and animators can't be bothered to make sure that the location of the Terrasphere remains consistent. As this scene currently stands, the order of events must be that Sage fetched her Terrasphere off screen, consoled time, and then threw the trinket back under the table off screen once again. It's ridiculous. This is definitive proof that no one making this travesty gave a single fuck. This is such a simple mistake to notice and fix. In fact, I did fix it. There. See. Done. This took me no longer than a couple of minutes. And I'm working on a dirt poor ass editing software. What's the excuse of this commercial show with an actual budget? No matter how tiny. Someone was paid for this. Yet no one cares enough to double check for obvious continuity errors. Directly undermining the drama. But enough of that, Time unleashes her impotent rage, seeking vengeance for the spilled milk, Olive can deflect the arrows effortlessly, and yet she somehow manages to lose in the end, and begins casting her grand magic of mass devastation. Our resident warriors Rosemary and Time have the brilliant plan of standing still with their thumbs up their ass, instead of crossing the gap between the buildings, and stomping Olive before she can finish casting. But I hear you say, oh come on, that distance seems rather wide, it's not like they could clear that. Glad you brought it up, theoretical person in the audience, because I would agree under normal circumstances. However, the very next scene gifts us with this information. Rosemary's ankles and kneecaps didn't explode after several story drop, and time is practically Miles Morales. Both of them are supernaturally athletic, except when it would be inconvenient for the plot. Everything just works however, depending on the scene. This is not dramatic storytelling, this is a farce. Points for Parsley for actually doing something and trying to rescue Neppy, sulking in the corner. Because... why is he sulking in the corner? Thanks, Neppy, for leading all four of them straight to me! Neppy Cat betrayed us! No! Because... funny? Sure, keep mutilating the tone. It's not like any of this can be taken seriously anyway. Also, this spell's design makes no sense. Yes, I'm complaining about it. It's a spell that turns everyone into stone, so why is the visual motif this lightning storm, complete with this massive magic rune that looks like a circuit board? Even the soundtrack has this sudden electronic flare while the spell is winding up? It's a design nightmare. Aside from that, its effect is absolutely devastating. 
relatively quick casting time, large scale effect. The spell sweeps the entire city, through walls and everything. It can be blocked with a magical barrier, provided that it faces the correct direction, I guess? But still, if you don't have one set up, you are absolutely fucked. Begs the question how come the caster themselves survives the effect? Since the spell travels in all directions, 360 degrees from the casting point. But oh well, I guess the dramatic slam against the wall kickback effect works just as well. And thus, the entire Lingarf turns to stone. The city is dead silent, the girls are barely okay, or at least most of them. This is the most intense situation the protagonists have ever faced. Fittingly for the show, this is how the episode closes. No! In case you are unsure, no, I did not edit that. That is actually how the episode ends. This dramatic silence immediately undercut with Almost broke my neck from the whiplash. If this is not self-parodying, I don't know what is. The show is utterly tone deaf. Like the opening, the ending song is pure sugar and cuteness and does not fit the show as a whole. The darker tones and intended serious dramatic twists and turns do not mesh with these happy-go-lucky themes. And this constant dissonance between the silly and the serious infects every major event in the show. Since the writers refuse to fully embrace either of them, both of them end up feeling flat. This episode should have faded away into the silence. Have the closing credits roll over the climax if you absolutely must have them. It's not some amazing unheard of trick. Many animes do something similar, playing around with their openings and endings to better fit the mood. You are already getting inspired, so this would have been the perfect place to borrow some more. The song itself is craptastic, just like the opening. The lyrics are laughable, generic nonsense about friendship, and how good friends the girls are, and how much fun they are gonna have as friends. If I was to say something positive, I'd say the fact that it's actually performed by Rosemary and Sage is fitting. This is a story about their friendship, and all the troubles and turmoil they'll face together. The intent is clear, and executed adequately. In a vacuum, mind you. It's simply a shame that I despise both of the characters, so the intended effect is hollow. And as always, a massive thanks to each of you for listening till the end. The continued support is very much appreciated, and a special thanks goes to all the supporters on Patreon, as well as an extra special thanks to my 10 euro supporters, Wyland, Jesiah Vanderwatt, Six Stars, and Taugrin. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out any of my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.